distracted girl's life gets turned upside down after being in a car accident with her family. The movie begins with a monologue from the main character that's expressing her admiration for Ludwig van Beethoven who even went deaf, but still found a way to work his passion. She goes on to say that you have to take any chance in life and try to use the maximum of it. She starts talking about her dad, revealing to us that her dad had quit his band when her little brother Teddy was born to pursue a career to take care of the kids. She then moves on to her mom and calls her a riot girl who found her calling. Then she moves on to herself, she reveals that she had thought that she had it all figured out but feels lost more than ever. As the family's having a casual breakfast, Mia's mom pulls out a newspaper where we can see the local band and the boy on the cover of it. It says that their band is on the rise. Right as all of them are about to go out, the radio is heard with news about a snow day happening so school is cancelled. The family is more than thrilled because they'll have a family day together. As the rest of the family are gushing over what they should do for the day, Mia's thoughts are with Adam. She reminisces about the time when she met him and even calls him the right person in her life. It cuts to the day Adam had first seen Mia. She was playing the cello in one empty classroom. Right as he gets to the door Mia's friend bumps into him. He asks about her and the class she's in and goes on. Mia's friend walks into the classroom and tells her that Adam had been asking about her. She brushes it off because she doesn't believe her friend Kim. They go into the halls and Mia asks Kim not to take a picture of him but Kim does as she wants to. Over the next couple of days, Adam would be around Mia all the time. One day, as Mia is at her locker, Adam comes to her and introduces himself. He asks her on a date and says that he has tickets to see a cellist. Mia is stunned but Adam takes that as a yes. It cuts back to the present. Mia's parents are looking for a way to spend the free day that they have. They are suggesting different ideas, but Mia says that she's not sure if she can go. Mia has applied to Juilliard and is waiting for a letter back to see whether she's accepted or not. Her parents beg her and she ends up agreeing and they all hit the road. Mia's thoughts go in another direction as she wonders if her parents are disappointed in her because she wasn't like them. Mia's dad had been in a band before her brother was born. Mia was surrounded by rock all the time but she didn't get into it, instead, she wanted the complete opposite. Her love for the cello was discovered in the second grade, when she accidentally found a cello in her classroom and wanted to play it immediately. Cellos are really expensive so she borrowed one from school and her parents hired someone to teach her how to play it. Even though she wasn't really good at it, Mia loved playing the cello. She would play it day and night and even though her parents supported her they couldn't bear it. We see the day that Mia's parents realized that Mia's cello obsession wasn't just a temporary thing, but it was serious. The next day her dad had come home with a cello of her own. It cuts to the present, the family is driving on the snowy roads, and just like that, in a split second, the worst happens. The family crashes into another car. Everything goes white and we see Mia laying in the snow and slowly waking up. She wakes up and sees police and ambulance cars around her. She goes to ask what's going on but realizes that everyone is ignoring her. She sees her parents' car crashed on the road but she also sees herself, laying on the ambulance bed about to be taken to the hospital. This is when we learn that that's Mia's ghost. She gets into the ambulance and goes with her body. It cuts to the past again where we can see Adam and Mia's first date. Mia is getting ready for the date with her mother as she complains that she has nothing to wear, and is even considering not going. Her mom calms her down and helps her get ready. Adam rings the doorbell and the door opens as Mia's father is standing at the front. They greet each other and Adam even says that he's a huge fan. They leave and go to the concert. During the symphony, Adam holds Mia's hand and as she holds back, he smiles as he's happy that Mia likes him back. The symphony finishes and they go out. Adam expresses his admiration for every performer and how the woman had left everything on the stage. He then asks Mia about her story and how a rocker child turns into a cellist. Mia explains that she feels like an alien in the family as she has been bred to be a rocker child but she chose Beethoven instead. As they continue walking, Adam stops Mia and takes her hand. Mia is confused as to why Adam chose her but he tells her that he loves to watch her play and that she's beautiful. This brings a smile to Mia's face but she also thinks that Adam will mess up her entire life. Adam smiles and says that a little mess never hurt anybody as he kisses her. They return to Mia's house holding hands. A week goes by and Adam takes Mia to one of his gigs. Even though Mia grew up with rock music she doesn't really enjoy it as she finds herself unwanted and disliked by Adam's friends. After the show, Mia refuses to go to the after party with Adam, and though conversation reveals that she's jealous of Adam's friend Liz who has been really close to him throughout the whole night. Adam laughs at Mia and tells her that Liz is interested in women and that she has nothing to worry about. The date ends up on quite an awkward note as Mia lies just to not go to the after party. Back to the present day. Mia goes to the front desk at the hospital and asks for some information. The staff ignores her and this is when Mia realizes that people can't see her. She sees herself on a hospital bed, being rushed to the operating room. She walks in and watches her body being operated on. One of the nurses whispers in her ear and tells her that she has the power to control this whole thing, so she has to choose whether she wants to die or live. One of the best memories that Mia has is Adam's first lunch at their house. We see Adam, Mia, and her whole family enjoying a family lunch, eating delicious food, and having a wonderful time. 
At night as Mia's about to go to bed, she gets a text from Adam to look outside her window. She opens the window and sees that Adam is coming up as he has to tell her something. He comes in and tells her that he had an amazing time and that he feels like a part of the family. He reveals that he has been alone his whole life and that he doesn't really have a family. Mia tells him that he has a family from now on and they kiss. Kim and Mia's grandparents arrive at the hospital and ask for their family. Mia and her father are still in surgery, no information about the mother, but her brother Teddy is alright and is about to get a CAT scan. We see Mia and her mother having a conversation and Mia is asking for some advice on how to fit in Adam's crowd and how to get closer to his friends. Mia's mother knows that she doesn't fit the crowd but asks her to pretend for one day and see how she likes it. Mia decides to dress up as one of the best rocker chicks in history just for Adam. Halloween comes in as Adam tries to get into the club. Mia stops him by calling his name. He can't believe his eyes, but Mia is surprised as well when she sees Adam dressed as Ludwig van Beethoven. The couple gets in and Adam takes two shots for them to take. Mia refuses and lets Adam go to the stage. One of Adam's friends comes and convinces Mia to go to the front of the stage which has never happened. Mia takes the shot and dances all night long as she enjoys her boyfriend's music. After the party, Mia and Adam are standing by his car. Mia asks him whether he likes her more dressed like that or he likes the normal her. He tells her that he doesn't care about the way she dresses and that he is in love and will be in love with her no matter what. Mia asks Adam to go somewhere private. Adam takes her to a shed and they end up making love all night. The most heartbreaking thing happens as Mia finds out that her parents had passed away as she overhears the doctors talking. She is devastated and all the beautiful memories of her family run back in her mind. She rushes to Teddy immediately and gets good news as Teddy has gone through all the difficulties. Adam rushes into the hospital looking for Mia. Mia's spirit rushes to her as she tells her that she has to wake up for her brother. Another memory comes up and we see Adam with Mia's family at one of her plays. Adam looks at her with pride and love. She compares her relationship with Adam as a way of learning how to fly while reminiscing about one of the best springs ever. Adam's been success in Mia's preparation for college, their plans to live together, and to be close were just some of the desires the couple longed for. With Adam's success came distance as he was doing shows in other cities as well. The couple tried to see each other often regarding the situation they were in. Mia's family put her in thought as they advised her to go to Juilliard, a college with high performance peaks. Mia refuses at first and says that her whole life is there. Some time passes and Mia decides to get some advice from her dad. She asks about him leaving the band and he says that it was just an adventure that he went on. Having children was another adventure that started once the previous had ended. Mia listens to her dad and decides to reconsider her decision about the school as she opens Juilliard online. Mia tries to tell Adam but she can't do it as she beats around the bush for some answers. She asks him whether the band would ever relocate like to New York for example and he tells her that the band will stay in Portland. When asked why, Mia just answers the question with a simple just asking. Mia sends Adam back on the road but worries about him not reaching out. She is venting to her friend about it when the phone rings and it's Adam. He can't really hear her because he is at an after party and hangs up the phone. Mia is a little bit hurt but decides to not do anything about it as she understands his job. The next morning Mia receives a letter from Juilliard. She's gotten the audition. She goes to the shed to tell Adam the news and things go south from there. Mia tells Adam that she has applied to Juilliard and he doesn't take it well. He is in shock and doesn't really know what to say but keeps his cool either way. At one of the band's gigs back in Portland, Adam and Mia have a rather tense relationship. Adam is caught up with the fame and doesn't really show interest in his girlfriend. Mia gets pissed off and decides to wait by the truck for Adam. Adam sees her and tries to start a fight by saying that if she was so bored at the concert she should have stayed home. Mia says that she would have stayed home if she knew that he would be ignoring her and they start fighting. Mia sees that Adam is filling the trunk and asks him what he is doing. Adam says that he has a show the next day and he has to go to Seattle. Mia, being surprised asks him about their plans and when were they going to spend some time together. This is when Adam snaps, he tells her that they had plans for college as well but she ruined everything by applying to Juilliard, and even calls her a liar. She tries to defend herself by saying that she hasn't ditched anything and Adam uses her words against her. She fights back as she says it's not fair that he gets a chance to chase his dreams but she doesn't. Adam tells her that she lied to him and that he doesn't need that. Mia tries to convince him by saying that they could text and Skype if she ends up getting into Juilliard. Adam snaps again and even insults her by saying that she's so naive. He then gets into the van but Mia stops him by saying that she didn't tell him about Juilliard because she's terrified about losing him. He leaves her by saying that she should do her thing and let him do his. The next couple of days go with Mia checking up on Adam through his social media. All she does is think about him and everything reminds her of their relationship. One day as Mia gets home and enters her bedroom she sees Adam. She asks him what he's doing there and he points to the ceiling. Adam had printed pictures of the Jolari Hall in San Francisco where she would be auditioning. He did that so it would be easier for Mia to audition since she will be looking at it every day. 
Mia is thankful but she is tired as well. She yells at Adam that she doesn't know what he wants. Adam apologizes and says that he is afraid of losing her and that people have had a habit of disappearing in his life in the past. Mia says that she loves him and Adam promises to change. He gives her a present for her birthday and it is a bracelet with a cello and a guitar, representing their passions which she will wear on her wrist. They kiss and make up. Mia asks Adam what was the moment he realized that he is actually good. Adam tells quite a sad story. He remembers going to the gas station before a gig and seeing his dad. His dad had looked at him and hadn't even recognized who it was as he had walked right across him. Adam says that he played like he was on fire that night, and that was the moment he knew that he was going to do that for the rest of his life. It cuts to the present. We see Mia's spirit looking over her body and thinking about the nurse's words. She finds herself in a rather conflicted situation as she doesn't want to wake up an orphan but she also can't let go. Back to the past, we see Mia at her audition for Jullyard. Her grandpa being by her side helps her a lot. She is nervous but does as she should. She starts playing in something, some kind of magical power makes her play the best she's ever played in her life. She's on fire and does really well. Her grandpa manages to open the door and look at her directly on stage. After the audition, her grandpa drives her home. When Mia tries to leave, her grandpa stops her. He tells her that she has something special just like her dad, and he wants to let her know about that, so she doesn't make the same mistake twice, as he did with her dad by not letting him know that he had a special talent. He encourages her to continue and try to be the best she can. The next day Mia goes to Adam's shed and tells him about the audition. She tells him that she had done better than she ever has and that she felt like she was possessed. She reveals that she's never felt anything like that before. The couple spends the day together and Adam drives Mia home in the evening. Mia doesn't really believe that she would get into Jullyard but Adam reassures her that she may. She gets sad because she and Adam won't be close to each other. It cuts to the present. Kim finds Adam on the roof and goes to talk to him. Adam reveals that he feels like a bad person. He asks about her application and whether she has been accepted, and Kim reveals that she doesn't know but the letter was supposed to arrive on that day. Adam says that he cannot lose Mia again and tells Kim to come with him. Adam wants to get into Mia's room to see her and Kim helps him. She goes to the security guard and makes up a story that some woman is giving birth in the toilet and needs his help. The security guard goes with her and this is Adam's chance to get in. He goes straight to Mia and right as he's about to touch Mia, he is stopped by the guard. Right as they are taking Adam out of the room they are stopped by Willow, Mia's parents' friend. She handles the situation and tells them that Mia's going to need them more than ever. When they ask about Teddy, Will cries and this is when Mia realizes that Teddy has passed away. She runs to his room but doesn't see him. She thinks about the fact that he will never experience the basic things in life, the joy and the sadness of it. Mia's soul is tired and it shows on her body as they take her to another operation. Mia's spirit sees Adam leaving and says goodbye to him but little did she know where he was going. It cuts to the past when New Year's Eve is being celebrated. They are counting down from 10 as Adam is looking for Mia. He finds her and they kiss while celebrating New Year's with each other. Adam asks Mia to promise him that they would spend their next New Year's Eve together. Mia says that even if they're not physically together he would always be with her. Adam doesn't like that answer as it is not good enough. Mia doesn't want to promise something like that to him and Adam says that they both know where their relationship is heading. They're both sad but that's the reality. Mia goes back home and sees her parents with their friends celebrating. Mia's mom notices that she's sad and tells everyone to go to another room. Mia starts crying and says that she and Adam had broken up. They're both going in different directions. Her mother tells her that every relationship is hard and that she shouldn't blame it on the music. Mia asks her mother what to do and she tells her that it is up to her and that whatever she decides she would support her. Life is a big mess and that's the beauty of it. She says that true love is hard and that it always has its ups and downs. We see Mia in the present, her body on the hospital bed and her spirit sitting next to it. Her grandpa had come to see her. She asks him what she should do and hears her grandpa speak. He tells her the story behind the reason her dad quit the band. He reveals that he had asked his son why he had decided to leave the band, and his son had told him that in life you have to make sacrifices. Her father had made the sacrifice for her, he had sold his drum kit only to buy the cello for Mia to practice playing, as he had recognized her talent. Her grandpa tells her that he wants her to live, he wants her to fight with every strength left in her body, but if she can't do it she can let go because he doesn't want her to live a hard life. Some time passes and friends and family can come to see Mia. Everyone from close friends to acquaintances and even Adam's band had come to see Mia. We see Kim, her best friend and she's happy to see her but also sad because her best friend is going through the worst. She tells Mia that she is her family, she still has a family, and shows her favorite picture. She looks so happy and Kim says that no matter what she is going to remember her like that. It cuts to Mia's favorite day in her life. Mia's favorite day in her life is Labor Day. 
everyone had come together for a barbecue. From family to friends, everyone was enjoying the burgers Teddy and her father were making all day. When it started to get dark, they started a bonfire. Mia's father and Adam had asked Mia to play with them. They start playing together and a magic melody is made. Mia reveals that she always considered the cello a solo instrument but that is the day she realized that the cello is a part of something greater. The beautiful bonfire shines while the group is singing and playing together. Mia says that day she felt real happiness and that she finally had found her scene. Mia's spirit stands over her body, looking at her for the last time. Her spirit exits the room where the body is in and walks through the halls of the hospital. She walks past all the people that are there for her, and sees them for the last time as a sad smile is pasted on her face. As her spirit continues walking she sees a light. Right as she's about to walk into the light, she hears her favorite piece playing. She turns from the light and follows the sound. She gets to her room and sees Adam taking the headphones off of her ears. He asks her to stay even though a huge part of her life had been taken away. He reveals that he went to her house and climbed through the roof as he takes out the letter she had received from Juilliard. He opens it to read it and tells her that she had gotten in. He begs her to wake up and tells her that he would move with her and the only thing he wants from her is to wake up. Adam gets his guitar out and says that he had written a song for Mia. After hearing the song that is filled with wonderful words that are with pure love and joy, Mia gets the strength to wake up as she finds herself reminiscing all her life and all the kind words she has heard while being in a coma. Mia wakes up and the first person she sees is Adam, calling out her name. 